This video has been sponsored by Frontier Wargaming. Successor chapters, quite often they take a backseat to the first founding when it comes to Space Marines. The schemes are quite often split with either shoulder pads or an arm being a different colour or having your halved and quartered schemes. With the release of the Dark Angels Codex, me and Jeff were looking through some of the successor chapter schemes and we thought to ourselves, let's draw some names out of a hat and try and paint some. Never done any kind of split scheme before. See if I get one. Could be a train wreck. Let's see what happens. Right, I'm up first. And I have... Oh, piss. Penitent Blades. I'm going to have to think about this one. I'm using my Harder on Steamback Ultra. Link in the description. I'm really liking Vallejo Surface Primer at the minute. So starting there. Ultra set to prime and we're off. More rare paints to get my pink layer. Set my Ultra to base for this one. And everything that I've used so far has been diluted 50-50 through the airbrush. Works a treat. This did take a couple of coats. Now that I've got a nice pink layer over the miniature, I'm going in with my Tamiya Flat White using their specific thinner with a 3 to 1 ratio. Great for building up those layers. I've definitely over thinned this in the past, so trying to be a bit more aware of that. Then it's onto my favourite yellow Imperial Fist contrast and blasting that all over. With the pink being a bit brighter than some of the ones that I've used in the past, the shadows are a bit less orange, which I quite like, but it's definitely in need of a highlight. So I'm grabbing the brightest yellow air paint that I've got, mixing in a little bit of white and just trying to stick some volumes of light on what I think will be the brightest areas. That's all the airbrushing done, and I'm super happy with how this looks currently. That airbrushing took a little while, so I'm gonna continue painting at home with a hobby deck from Frontier Wargaming. I've moved house recently and don't have the space for a permanent painting setup. The hobby deck is perfect for me because it allows me to paint anywhere. I can paint on the sofa as it comes with a comfy cushion that just velcros onto the bottom, or as it's removable, I can take that off and it doubles up as a painting tray on any flat surface that you've got available. The standard kit comes with an enamel mug. It's secured with magnets, so the chances of it flying anywhere are slim. Awesome design choice. You also get a phone stand. Great if you're following a tutorial whilst you're painting or catching up on a series. The version I'm using has some storage racks for your paints and an LED light. The lighting in my house is crap for painting, so I really love this. I stuck it into a power bank via the USB cable and managed a solid evening of painting. You can also get custom engraving as well. So let's take this home and see how it performs whilst I try and quarter this Terminator. Going in with AK Deep Blue, the great thing with these Terminators is there's only really two to three straight lines that you need to paint. The butt cover thing being the first one and then the top of the armor being the second. Maybe the crotch, the rest are quite small patches and and generally okay to do. The Aquila very kindly gets in the way. I took the helmet one angle at a time and that seemed all right. I plan to weather these up anyway to cover up any mistakes or splodges. Next up, from the comfort of my own home, I'm blacking out the details, putting on some chippy highlights and then trying to add some glazes to that blue to give it a bit more shape and match what I've done with the airbrushing. Shading down with the dark blue and then up with the light, it's a bit rough in places, but definitely better for it. Using the same Ducat blue for some highlights on the blue, following that same sort of chippy method. And then I'm just basing in the rest of the colors and adding a few highlights here and there. And then I'm ready to take it back to the office for an oil wash. Thoroughly enjoyed my time painting on the sofa and the hobby deck is awesome. So back in the studio, it's a quick coat of gloss, then breaking out the oils and odorless spirits. I'll never get tired of watching it shoot around the miniature. This is always really good fun. Because I'm a bit messy, I've always got to clean up afterwards using a damp brush, damp with spirits, and then wiping away any imperfections. With the transfers, these guys have three swords on the pauldron, which I'm going to grab off a Dark Angels upgrade sheet. I think I contaminated the brush that I'd used with spirits, however, as when I went to apply them, they just disintegrated. Brutal. Freehand it is. I was definitely found wanting here. I feel like this was some of my best airbrush work to date on this mini, but my brush skills were, were lacking a bit. I improved my sort of banana shaped swords a bit by cutting back in with the blue to try and straighten up some of the angles. And yeah, just kind of decided to, to leave it there. 
matte varnish over and then just the metallics to finish. We haven't really used Pro Acryl in ages on the channel, so wanted to give them a go. Definitely not used to how thick the paints are, and it took a while to get a dilution I was happy with. I'm not going to say that I don't like using them. I think I'm just not not used to them. Uh, I've been using a lot of Vallejo Game Air at the minute, and these are very different. Null Oil and Reichland Flesh Shade for the silver and gold. I've been using quite matte shades recently, and I don't know if I like them over metallics. The shades from Workshop kind of dry slightly shiny, so I'm going to give them a go for metallics. Fluoro green for the lights, red for the eye lens, done. Some errors here and there, some highs and lows. I really like the yellow. The blue's a bit messy, but you get the idea of the shading. I need to spend a bit more time cleaning up the oil wash too, I think. But all in all, first successor chapter marine that I've painted, and I think I've successfully quartered it, so I'm pretty happy. I can definitely see why GW don't put these guys front and center on boxes. It would absolutely put me off starting an army it would be very very time intensive has been super fun painting this one marine has been a blast a kill team potentially an army absolutely not massive respect to anyone that does send me pictures of it i want to see anyway uh yeah let's go and see what jeff draws first disciples of caliban who the hell are they thanks <laughs> all right okay disciples of caliban are a fleet-based chapter that strikes with blistering speed. They were found at an M37 under circumstances that have never been disclosed. Rumours abound over their creation, and unforgiven chapters theorise that they were created for the pursuit of the renegade known as Cypher. They bear... Oh, hang on a minute. They're always chasing somebody, aren't they? They never do anything new. I think I'm going to go the Byron Artis Opus method and do some dry brushing for that green. That should make it look pretty good. And I think I'm going to have to push a little bit on the brightness because they're going to be, the rest of them's going to be black. I'll start as I've done before with this sort of thing of going with Caliban Green as my base coat, which I'll then slowly blend through with Warpstone Green and then eventually get all the way up to Mute. But I'm going to do this through dry brushing on my texture pad and just push it and push it till it goes through. So hopefully not getting it looking too much like salamanders will be the plan. I repainted all of the black after the undercoat with Black Legion paint, so it gave me space if I made any mistakes. I highlighted it with Administratum Grey using the Cult of Paint method of Tippy Tappy Highlights, basically meaning I did a scratched effect throughout all of the black. The Aquila, the Crux Terminatus on the shoulder and the matching one on the knee were all painted with a mid gray and then highlighted with a light gray. I then used the panel liner just to get into all the little grooves on the two symbols. As per the image, the Storm Bolter is just gunmetal effect. I've given it a quick wash over with non oil. The wing skull and ammunition has been painted in Retributor Gold with a with a quick wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. The lenses were done in the tried and tested method of a red base, orange highlight, and then just two little white dots right at the very ends of the lenses. The last thing I did was to give the green armor a weathered and scratched effect. I did this by going back to Caliban green and using that as the dark scratch color and using mute as the highlight edge alongside it. A disciple of Caliban, all completed. For what I thought was going to be a really boring looking miniature, black against green, I actually quite like him. I really went to town on the scratching to try and make him, and the battle damage to make him look as interesting as possible. And it's created quite a punchy looking green effect. I'm quite pleased. He's no blood angel to look at, but yeah, he looks fine. He looks like he uh, he's dark angel adjacent. I'm quite pleased with how that came out for what is a relatively simple paint scheme. Yeah. Go and look for Cypher, off you pop. So for my final Marine, I've just drawn Angels of Redemption, another split scheme, thankfully only half this time. Let's just dive in. Starting off the same as last time and getting my priming out of the way with the Ultra, black primer, but then I'm gonna use a brown as a base coat on this one. Back to my Tamiya Flat White, and speaking of over thinning, I think I did that here. Few mistakes, few bits of spider webbing, as you can see. 
I mixed up a bit more of a concentrated mix and then went over it again and hopefully sorted it. For airbrushing, I've really been enjoying Tamiya Flat White. I've tried using inks but had problems with reactivation at a various degree of leaving things for hours and sometimes even days so I'm, I think I'm just avoiding them from from here on in yeah can't recommend this enough time to get the bone sorted I'm going to use a thin down mix of skeleton horde all over I think I probably went a bit too heavy but at the time I thought it was okay moving on to the green I wanted to try and use my work on the zenith also tried out a contrast paint in the hope that I'd get a bit of a gradient built in having done all that work previously in short it didn't work and i just painted over it with black green from ak and approached it with a similar glazing technique to last time Had a brief interruption from this ladybug, so threw that outside and then chipped up the green. I know Pale Sand gets a lot of love online, but I've really been enjoying Buff recently, so chipped up the bone with that. I should have highlighted the bone with the airbrush like I did with the yellow, um, but we live and learn. It strays a bit too far into muddyish bone here and there, I think. The contrast between the brown and the bone is 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 quite strong so we meet again whilst i'm just waiting for a layer of gloss varnish to dry i'm going to go in with an oil wash just to get the recesses can't be bothered using two colors for each side or one color for each side so i think i might just mix a black and a brown together and and see what happens i also need to try and do the transfer and i'm looking at the um at the shoulder pad and I'm, i think i might be able to chop up a raven guard symbol and then plonk a skull in the middle of it that's going to be the plan if i can uh, if i can find find everything chopping up the transfers worked pretty well i wouldn't want to do this for a whole army but it was quite rewarding having spent the time cutting all those uh, decals up and then having it actually work. Back to the air metallics, same wash as last time, jobs are good. Overall, I'd probably say I'm not quite as happy with this one as my penitent blade. I think the bone lets it down a bit. Quite happy with the green, maybe too much brown, not enough of a highlight. I'm not 100% sure where I went wrong. I think, you know, I could say it's it's grim dark, but I think it's just a bit a bit muddy, especially at the back. So maybe more white and then less of the contrast maybe. I don't know. Let me know what you think. All that aside though, it definitely looks like an angel of redemption, so I will take it. Guardians of the Covenant. Comes up with these bloody names. Right, let's have a look at them. It's not known from what founding the warrior monk of the Guardians the Covenant came, only that they too are unforgiven. Their adopted home world, Mortacath 7, possibly. <laughs> they are looking like they are lead belcher, and quite simple scheme actually, black shoulder pads. They, yeah, I think I'm going to be alright with these, you know. Um, yeah, ah, there we go, actual some Terminator ones as well. Okay, yeah, so... Let's get cracking on with them as well then. So after priming the Terminator black, he was then primed again with lead belcher spray from Games Workshop. So I decided to paint all of the black bits first, being the shoulders and the undersuit and both of the weapons casing. And did this mainly because I thought if I get the black onto the lead belcher, it's easily corrected. Once I'd done that, I then went ahead and used a very thin down mix of Basilicanum Grey and Contrast Medium to be able to get a, just enough that I took the slightly strange shine of Lead Belcher off the miniature. Once that was all done, I went to my favourite and tried and tested method when it comes to painting anything silver, is I cracked out the panel liner, my one coming from Tamiya, and went round the whole miniature 
doing my best to catch all of the small grooves, give the miniature just a bit more depth. All of the lead belcher armor was highlighted with the AK dark aluminium, and this gave it a nice punchy effect. I also, at the same point in time, went in and did some small scratches, mainly on the legs and the power fist. I highlighted the Aquila, the Crux Terminatus, and the matching one on his knee, all in standard gray, followed by a light gray and a very small spot highlight of white. I used a medium gray just to give the black shoulder pads a quick edge highlight. The Terminator's lenses were first painted in black just to leave a nice outer edge. I then used AK white to fill them in. I then went in with Frost Heart contrast paint, filled the eye socket. Once it was dry, gave it another dash of the white. The Terminators actually have one leg halved into red, which wasn't really in my plan to be fair, but um, I think I'm gonna have to crack out some tape and put that in that way. I think it'll be fine. See how we get on. Although it was difficult to do with using the trailing leg, with it being the one which doesn't have the Crux Terminator symbol on it, I had to try and get the tape in there as best I could. I wasn't massively sure how this was going to work out. I took it as near as I could and then just filled in at the very, very end, left it to dry, took the tape off, and it looked, if I do say so myself, pretty good. To make the leg of the Marine match the rest of the Marine, I gave it some light chipping. After that was the bit that I've been dreading most, which was the decals. Managed to find reasonably large white swords on a black Templar sheet. And thankfully we had two of those sheets. So we got these swords and decided what angles we think they would work at and crossed them over. Exactly. Nailed it in a one <laughs> You, you, Zenos. <laughs> Once both lots of decals were dry, I went back in and I chipped them up with the base colours that was underneath them. Here he is, Terminator of the Guardians of the Covenant chapter. I thought, like the last one, he was going to be a bit boring, if I'm honest. Silver marine, black shoulder pads. Thought, yeah. But I'm actually really pleased with the results. I did a little bit of chipping on him, which has helped him stand out a bit more. And as much as I was dreading doing it, I think the half red stripe, the red stripe on the leg has worked out quite well. Decals look good. They've just helped the miniature punch through a little bit. You look all right, little man. Off you go. You can go and help your mate find Cypher as well. So there we go. Successor chapters complete. Uh, I've had an absolute blast. Um, and thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, hopefully you have too. If you're thinking about doing a halved or a quartered sort of space marine, um, go for it. It's it's not as scary, maybe as uh, as as you might think. Just just dive in and 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 have a go. I think that's the best the best advice. Um, and if you mess up, you'll do better next time. Um, but yes, I've got this Dark Angels box, and I might that's going to be in my next video painting all of this. I might do normal death wings. Um, I might do one of these. Let me know in the comments what I should do. Bully me into doing something. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for Frontier Wargaming sponsoring this video. If you uh, want a cozy painting station, this this really is a great way to go. I've had uh, really great fun. Um, really, really comfortable uh, painting sessions um, using it on the sofa and. Uh, being a bit more social whilst painting rather than locking myself in a room or something like that. So, uh, thoroughly uh, recommend that if it's something that you want to try. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to our patrons. We shall see you in the next one.